Hi, Frank from the Old Town Coleman Center. The Coleman Company's been making Col <laughs> Coleman appliances for a long time. <laughs> Hi, Frank from the Old Town Coleman Center. The Coleman Company's been making pressure appliances for over 100 years now. They've made millions and millions of lamps, lanterns, lighting fixtures, heaters, stoves, irons, and burners for all types of purposes. And the neat thing is they all work basically the same. They all take a pressurized liquid fuel, they convert that liquid fuel to a gas vapor, and then they burn that gas vapor in a controlled manner to produce a very small and hot flame. So I wrote the Old Town Coleman website over 20 years ago. I had just purchased a large Coleman collection and I couldn't find any information at all on the internet on how they worked or how to rebuild them. So as I learned, I would document what I was doing and the first few chapters I wrote were how to rebuild a Coleman lantern or a Coleman stove. And then as I got a little bit more proficient at it and started understanding what was going on, I wrote my first theory of operation chapter. I am very excited today to be able to bring this to you in video format because I believe if you understand how it works, you'll understand why when it doesn't. This course will be broken down into three parts. The first one is called Under Pressure, the second will be From Gas to Gas, and the third will be Fire and Light. So this first chapter we'll be talking about the fuel tank, we'll be talking about how we build pressure in that tank with the pump and then how we maintain the pressure with packings, gaskets, and a check valve. So go grab a snack and something to drink, and I'll be right back after I light this lamp. Welcome back. So before I get started, let me introduce you to a few of my friends here. Starting on your left, I have a Sears black and blue single mantle lantern that was made by the Coleman Company. I have a Sunshine Safety F103 lamp that was also built by the Coleman Company that I believe this is the original shade for the lamp. This is a Coleman model number 395 hot plate. This is a model number five iron. This is a 502 Sportster stove. This is a 200A lantern made in 1951, commonly called the Christmas lantern. This is a Coleman CQ lamp over here with the third generation of 318 shade on it. And finally, this is a Coleman 426B three burner stove. The lantern that I'm gonna be using as an example is a vintage single mantle lantern this particular lantern is a 242C, but I'll be using pictures of this from a 1937 parts catalog, number 25. So first, let's talk about the fuel tank. This is a common Coleman fount. You can see it has three holes in it. One is for the pump cylinder. The second one is for the fuel filler. And the third one in the center is for the valve. Now, we'll cover this a little bit more in depth here in a few minutes, but this is what the inside of a fount looks like. You can see that the, the pump cylinder goes down into the fount and there is a small tube that rises to the top. That's because we have the bottom half of the fount is full of fuel and when we pressurize it, we want to put air up on top and force that fuel downward. The device that we use to pressurize a fount is called the pump. And until the 1920s, uh, all Coleman had external pumps that look just like this. This pump is for an iron. It's a smaller one. They also made one that was a little bit longer. That was for a lantern. And then they had a third type that was called the jumbo. That was for the larger appliances. All you would do is you would place this on here and pump it up like that. And that would pressurize the fount. The lantern you're looking at right now is from approximately 1924. It is a L427 lantern and you can see that it has the pump built onto it. Soon thereafter, Coleman decided that they would put their pumps inside of the fount, and that's what we have now. 
This is a pump, and they're, they're very basic. All they are really is a hollow tube. It's got a small handle on the end for you to grab onto. The working end of the pump is nothing more than a leather cup that as it travels down the cylinder, it expands a little bit and forces the air down into it. It is held on in the front and the back by large washers. Um, there is a dampening spring on it. And there is this device here on the end. This is where it attaches to the lamp or the lantern. And this is called, called the pump cap. Now, before we can show you how this thing works, I want to show you a couple other pieces that go with the pump. The first one is the check valve. The check valve is a device that allows air to flow in one direction only. You'll see in this lantern right here that down at the bottom is where this device sits. And as we pump our air down, it will allow air to flow into the fount, but it won't allow air to come back out. The inside of the check valve, at the bottom of it, there is a small check ball and that check ball is free to move up and down. If it is down, air is allowed to go past that little check ball. When the check ball is returned up, it is blocking the check valve and no air can flow through it. I'll describe this here again in a few minutes. There is a safety device that goes with the check valve and it's called the air stem. And this is the air stem. The check ball on the bottom blocks air from returning in this direction. This is a second stop or a safety device that screws in from the top and when it is all the way screwed in, it completely blocks air from flowing in either direction. The air stem is controlled by the pump stem. You can see that the pump is squared there and this fits in there and it turns. Now everybody has seen the instructions on the end of the pump that say close. When you turn this clockwise to close it, what you're actually doing is you're screwing that air stem into the check valve and blocking it off so no air can get out. That is the safe. So let me describe how the pump and the check valve and the air stem work together inside of the fount. This will fit inside of here and it will slide all the way down to the bottom. And the picture that you see now is from that 1937 uh, parts catalog. And if you look at it, you'll notice that the pump is being pulled up. As you pull the pump up, that little ball at the end of the check valve closes and it's going to create a small vacuum down there. As you pull the pump backwards, the air will flow over the top of the pump cap and it will fill that cylinder with air. As we move into the downstroke, the pump cup opens up a little bit more and it forces all of that air down. The check valve has opened up and air is being allowed to flow inside of the fount. It goes up through that little small tube and goes into the top of the fount. As we continue, we again pull our pump back. The check valve is again closed. You pull the pump back, it makes a small vacuum in there and air rushes over the top of the pump cup to fill the vacuum. And when you reach the top and you press down, the pump cup will push the air back down into the fount. Now, after doing this once or twice, the reverse pressure inside the fount is going to keep the check valve closed. And we continue to do this until we get a proper working air pressure inside. Once we have finished pumping, we turn our pump handle clockwise and that will screw in our air stem to the check valve and that will ensure that it will not allow any of our pressure to get out. Now with our fount fully pressurized, let's talk about how we maintain that pressure. The check valve is going to keep any pressure from being released out of the pump cylinder. On the other side of the fount, you'll see the fuel filler inlet and we will use a cap and a rubber gasket there to hold in the pressure. In the center is the valve hole, and when we thread our valve in, that is going to create a airtight seal for us there. So now we're at the point where our fount is fully pressurized. All that pressure is being held in there. The top of the fount is full of air, and that is exerting a downward force on the fuel. And that causes all that fuel to come up through the center of the fuel tube, where it rests at the bottom of the valve. And that's where we'll end chapter one. 
So I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. You can follow us on all social media. And remember that these instructions can be found at oldtowncoleman.com. Until chapter two, keep them burning.